Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be continuing our talks around fusion and looking at um, some kind of tips, tricks to helping you build out your own fusion scenario. So I'm going to be showing you uh, two ways that I use um, that help me when I'm building out fusion scenarios, specifically when I'm building out a custom API call um, and knowing what to put here, knowing what fields to bring in, um, the names, and making sure I write it correctly and um, get all that correct. Uh, and so I'm going to be showing you um, kind of what I've done, and hopefully it's helpful for you guys as well as you're uh, building out your own scenarios and you know creating the different um, automations that you're needing to create. So like I said there's going to be two two things I'm going to show you and. Um, I'm going to be building off kind of the example the, that I did in my last video. Um, so I'm using that same scenario. Uh, if you're curious on how I build this scenario, you can go watch that last video. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to kind of use this same example. But okay, so the first place you can go um, to help when you're, again, needing to understand um, how to build these out, what, what fields to use, um, is you can go to the Workfront API Explorer. So I'll leave this link in the description below to the video so you can check that out. Um, or if you just Google Workfront API Explorer, it should be the first one that pops up for you. But so yeah, so this is super useful when you really want to dive in, dig into um, the API and understanding um, these different uh, fields. And um, to give you an example, let's go down to project, one that we're probably you know all more familiar with. Um, so here you can see all the different fields that are associate, associated with that project uh, type, that object type. Um, so yeah, here are all the different fields. Uh, yeah, you'll see one's ID, uh, completion date, actual start date, plan completion date, all those fields you'll be able to see here and um, how it is written. So you'll notice pretty, it's pretty much always written in camel case. So, you know, if you're, you don't know how something is written, and you don't want to come look it up, you can maybe guess <laughs> that it's going to be just written in camel case. Um, and most of the time you'll be right. Um, there are, you know, times where it's going to be different. Um, but if you want to come double check, you can come in here, you can look at um, and understand the fields. Um, you can understand, okay, references, for example, my program portfolio. Um, these are, so you're able on that object, on the project object, you're able to still reference data from the program, data from the portfolio, um, data from these different uh, objects. Um, collections, so this is where you'll see, you know, tasks, for example. Um, so collections are going to be, so, you know, for the project, in this case, like a project is your object type, right? And then you have a task object type. So within a project, you have multiple tasks, correct? And so you, when you are trying to pull in data from the tasks, you need to be able to pull all kind of all those um, the objects, uh, one object type, all the different tasks um, that are associated with that project. So that's why it's going to be a collection because it's a collection, right, of all those um, of all those tasks that are then associated with the one project. Um, so you can see what those are that you can um, that you can pull that data as well. And again, you know how it's written. Um, and then search and actions as well. So this is very, very helpful when you're wanting to, again, dive in and understand um, certain aspects of the API. The other way that I want to show you, and this is what I end up honestly using more personally, um, just because I think it's a bit easier a lot of times. It really just, again, depends exactly what you're wanting to do. Um, there are definitely times where it's uh, necessary and helpful to come in here to the API Explorer. Um, but what you can do is you can build a report, just a straightforward report in Workfront, and then um, look at the text mode of that report to help you understand, okay, like how is it written, and then pull that into your Fusion. So just to give an example, um, so again, using this idea, right, so we're going to be wanting to, um, so imagine if we're starting from scratch, right, I haven't built this yet. I know conceptually what I'm trying to do, right? I'm trying to um, filter and bring in um, the the data, the for the task information for tasks that are um, meet this template task ID that are going to have a planned start date that is within 
like the next month or less, right? Um, and also that the status is not complete, right? So like as I'm thinking through what I'm, how, you know, I'm thinking through building this scenario, I'm like hey, first steps, I need to be able to bring in the right data, right? Um, and filter out and get down to just the, the in this case, task information that I need and, and filter just the specific tasks that are relevant. And so what you can do, so again, imagine we haven't actually built this yet, is instead of getting right into Fusion, you can actually go into Workfront and build out that report. So we'll build a task report and we'll start by filtering um, by template task ID, right? Template task ID, uh, let me just pull this template task ID here. Uh, I'll put it in here. Okay, so now we have template task ID is equal to that. We also said we want the status to not be complete, right? We don't want it equal to complete. Um, and then we also were looking at the planned start date. Um, so here, planned start date. Um, and we want it to, we don't want it to be just a specific date, right? Because it's um, dynamic. We want it to move with, as time goes by, we want it to always be um, basically less than a month, right? Uh, or 20, 20 working days is a month and so we'll uh, do a relative date instead of a, a hard fixed date so we'll just toggle that and then here's the only real like not coding but kind of more customized um aspect to building this report but this is still pretty straightforward right so we'll just do um today plus 20 days and not equal to we want it less than we'll say less than or equal to oops um today plus 20. Yeah. So yeah, so then as we're thinking through it, right, okay, this should filter out and, and give us the results that we're wanting, right? So it's going to be, okay, this template task ID, the status is not complete. Um, it's planned to start uh, within the next month. And uh, either any other filters we wanted to add, we could look and add that here. And then uh, once you do that, you can first you can save and close and just kind of look at your results and say, okay, does this look right? Like, does this is filtering what I want? Um, and say, okay, like, yeah, this looks good based on, you know, my knowledge is right. Um, then we'll go back into it. Once you kind of double check that your filters are correct in the report, um, then you can go over to text mode. And here, that's where it's going to show you exactly um, how it's written for you to then take this and put it into Fusion. So if you notice, like plan start date in camel case um, is equal to the today plus 20 and then plan start date underscore mod is equal to LTE, which is less than or equal to. Um, so if we go back over here, that is exactly um, what we have here. Plan start date is equal to, so the key, right? Plan start date, the value is that. And then for the key plan start date underscore mod, the value is LTE and the same for status. Um, same for the template task ID, um, right? So it makes it super easy. Um, and then, so we'll have that. And then you can also, uh, when you're looking at, for example, fields, so this is what you're wanting to output, right? Um, we have like our ID, our plan start date, plan completion date, um, and then we have has notes, right? And so what you can do um, is this is going to be what the columns are. Right. So if we wanted to bring in all this, we said the we want the task ID, for example. We could change this to the ID. Um, and then we had the uh, plan start date, plan completion date. Uh, plan start date. We'll do the completion. Plan completion date. Uh, what else? And then we have had notes. Uh, so I'll just get rid of these. And let's say you didn't know exactly like what the the right term for the notes field was. You just start typing note, and then you say, okay, like here's the option for the task object type. We have has notes, has reminder, notifications, last condition note ID, last ID. You're like, okay, it's gonna be has notes, right? Um, and then if we just go in. And Say this report, 
there we go. So we have in the three, we have the ID, we have the plan start date, plan completion date, we have if it has a note um, on that task. Um, and so that is, the output is going to be what in the report are going to be these columns. So this is the way you can, before again, imagine we haven't built this yet in Fusion. You can go into the report and much quicker, much easier, build it out and make sure you have all the data, make sure it's outputting what you want it to output. Um, your filters are all correct. And then you can go in and, and add it to Fusion. Um, and then one other thing I'll mention as well here, same as I did with the filters for the columns, you can go into the text mode up here and that will um, give you the, the right way for how it's written. Um, so that way you know in here, oops, uh, under fields here, that it that has notes. And then once you do that, another thing you can do is, um, let's go back here. You run a report, you've checked it out, then you transfer all that into your custom API call in Fusion, and then you can run it, right? So you can run that Fusion, um, that module, and you can compare it to the report. So for example, in this report, we had, based on the filtering and everything, we have three results, right? Um, with this output, right? But we have three results. So when we come here, and there we go. We come here and uh, run this. We can go into the results, go to the output body data. And so that's giving us three results. So like, first off, like first uh, glance, it's filtering the right number. Um, and then if we wanted to go more in depth, we could open these and, you know, compare the ID, the plan start date, making sure um, it's bringing in, you know, the right, all the right information for sure. Um, but so, yeah, so we can see this is definitely, you know, matches up with what we're bringing in here in this report. Um, so, you know, it's a good sign. And so that's a good way also to kind of check your work. Um, you can, you know, this is, again, this is a pretty simple example. Um, there's only three uh, results. So it's, it's pretty um, simplistic here. Um, but there's definitely times where, you know, you're going to be building a scenario where you're going to have, you know, dozens, hundreds um, of of results um, based on you know what you're filtering and so uh, it's really important for you to make sure right that you're that you do have those filters set up correctly and that you're bringing in the right data um, into your fusion to then be able to continue building out the next modules and, and have it do what you are planning for it to do yeah hopefully that is helpful hopefully that makes sense um so again you know if you're building out a custom api call um you know, if it's simple you, like this, you may not be necessary for you to build a report, but um, if you're, you know, getting started or if you just want to double check, definitely you can go in, build out the report, um, and then compare it. Once you then put in the Fusion, compare it and make sure everything is built correctly. So, yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, definitely, you know, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. You can message me and I try to stay on top of that. Um, my LinkedIn is just um, Christopher Taylor. Uh, so you can um, find me pretty easy that way. So I will see you guys on our next video. Thanks.